the bloodiest war in history. You realized back then on September the 1st, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland, that what followed would claim 70 million lives. And when it was finally over, empires would end, superpowers would rise, and the world that was would cease to exist. When Soviet soldiers raised a red flag over the Berlin Reichstag six years later, nobody argued that the Soviet Union was a liberator. But decades on, things are being viewed slightly differently. When Eastern Europe and Baltic states rejoined the European Union, immediately history became a big subject. Uh, because uh, we, we wanted that alongside with the, all the crimes which were committed by Nazis, also the crimes committed by totalitarian communism uh, would be recognized. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania were among those for whom history became a big subject. Despite the fact that they had long established an official day of deportations, they've added a new memorial day to their calendar, the 23rd of August. Now victims of Nazism and Stalinism are commemorated together. One nation which supports Russia and strongly opposes equating Nazism and Stalinism is Israel. I'd like to stress that in Israel, unlike the rest of the world, we don't celebrate the Victory Day on the 8th of May. We celebrate it on the 9th of May, just like Russia. Thus, we wanted to pay tribute to all the victims of the USSR and to show our solidarity with a country without which victory over fascism would be impossible. Russia showed its solidarity with Israelis by building a synagogue and the Holocaust memorial in the country's most sacred park. The memorial to victims of the Holocaust is part of the Victory Park in central Moscow. Russia erected the monument to the six million Jews who were exterminated during World War II. Modern Israel has always paid back to Russia with the same respect. It is one of the countries which has never doubted the role of the USSR in defeating Nazism. The main wish of Russia's Eastern European neighbors is for Moscow to acknowledge that the Soviet Union occupied them along with Hitler and to compensate them. But many historians point out that Eastern Europe had been divided long before the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. It was a year earlier, in 1938, in Munich, that Hitler, with the consent of Britain, France and Italy, tore up the continent on paper. It later decided the fate of Poland, Czechoslovakia, Lithuania and Latvia. The main part of the right concerning Latvia was the complete assimilation of locals with Germans, because Latvians were a so-called race-friendly people. To forget this now and say Latvia would have flourished and prospered under Hitler and remained independent is stupid. In the 70th anniversary year of the outbreak of the Second World War, the debate on its aftermath rages more than ever. With Eastern Europe badly hit by the financial crisis, turning to history is also part of a political agenda. If early elections take place, history could become a strong argument for voters, after other arguments have played out. Ekaterina Grachova, RT, Moscow.